A uh, very warm welcome, everyone, and thank you so very much for uh, joining us uh, today in this webinar. I'm Arman Rasul Faridi, Associate Professor in the Department of Computer Science, AMU, and also Coordinator of the CIVIL. Uh, today, we are presenting webinar on the topic Entrepreneurship in IT Sector. The speaker of this webinar is a distinguished alumnus of our Department of Computer Science, AMU, Mr. Ahmadullah. He is joining us from Santa Clara, California, USA. Uh, dear participants, before we get started, uh, allow me to assure you in the very beginning that uh, 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 you can surely interact with today's speaker there will be a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. If you have any question for the speaker about the presentation, please type them clearly with your name into the chat window. I'll try to collect this uh, uh, and, and address them during the question and answer session that is at the end of today's presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, Uh, I must tell you that uh, we have planned a series of webinars, and this present one is the second in this series. The idea is to primarily connect the alumni of the Department of Computer Science, AMU, who are in the industry and academia. You would agree uh, that creating an engaged, supportive alumni network is crucial to an institution success and we wish to create such a network of alumni who could donate their valuable time to offer career support to our students through innovative schemes such as professional mentoring program uh, work shadowing professional networking opportunities etc these will uh, definitely uh, enhance the students' experience and give them uh, that competitive edge in today's uh, job market. Our alumni are great resources and are immensely important stakeholders. They are closely watching the trends, the opportunities, the growth prospects, and have acquired a vast experience in the industry and real life over the years. I'm very sure that the present lot of fresh technocrats will be benefited with the rich uh, real life experiences of their seniors. Well, definitely uh, in future, we shall also welcome other speakers as well from academia and industry. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to inform you that we have received an overwhelming response from our alumni and participants. Many of our alumni have shown interest and inshallah we, have, we shall be organizing more such webinars on contemporary topics in the days to come. For today's webinar, we have 200 plus registered participants out of which we have with us 25 teachers as participants. 25 participants from industry and academia and 150 plus students. Apart from these other non-registered participants and alumni across the globe are also joining us and I welcome all of them. Ladies and gentlemen, Let me introduce the dignitaries we have with us. All the teachers of the Department of Computer Science. The Dean of the Faculty of Science, Professor Kazi Mazarali Saab. The Chairperson of the Department of Computer Science and the Convener of this event, Professor Asim Zafar Saab. Director of 
प्रोफेसर मोहम्मद नसीम फारूकी कंप्यूटर सेंटर एम यू डॉक्टर परवेज महमूद खास डायरेक्टर ऑफ सेंटर फॉर डिस्टेंस एंड ऑनलाइन एजुकेशन एम यू प्रोफेसर मोहम्मद नफीस अंसारी नफीस अहमद अंसारी साहब and the training and placement officer of amu mr sal hamid saab i welcome them all ladies and gentlemen now without further ado i come to business following the age old traditions of the aligarh muslim university i would like to formally start this session with the recitation of the holy quran and for that i would request dr faisal anwar assistant professor of the department of computer science himu to recite few holy verses over to dr faisal anwar thank you arman sir i am reciting uh, verses number 22 and 23 from chapter number 30 of holy quran اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن اياته خلق السماوات والارض واختلاف السنتكم والوانكم ان في ذلك الايات للعالمين وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ مَنَامُكُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَابْتِغَاؤُكُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَسْمَعُونَ and the tra- translation of uh, these verses are and one of his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth and the diversity of your languages and colors surely in this are signs for those of sound knowledge and one of his signs is your sleep by night and by day for rest as well as your seeking his bounty in both surely in this are signs for people who listen thank you so much it is over to you arman sir uh, thank you so very much dr faisal anwar uh for beautiful recitation and translation for the audience ladies and gentlemen our respected dean professor qazi mazhar ali sahab is with us professor qazi mazhar ali sahab despite his prior engagements has spared some time for today's webinar on our request and i thank him for Uh, for, for for accepting our request considering his busy schedule i would like to begin with him and i would request in the very beginning to professor qazi mazhar ali sahab to say a few words to the audience over to you sir assalam alaikum we very nice good good morning to everyone alaikum assalam uh, professor asim zafar sahab professor abdullah bukhari professor tamanna dr man rasul frizi dr pervez mehmood khan sahab afi tansari sahab and uh, tpo sahab and the speaker mr ahmadullah and all the participants of this event assalamu alaikum yeah uh, um, the department of computer science is doing a very noble task by organizing uh, this the webinars which are really practically useful for the students beyond their curriculum i mean curriculum is there but uh, it has to be added sir, with certain new dimensions so that they can make use the knowledge that they gained uh, during their studies and the topic today which has been chosen is really a need of our what is actually happening i um, mean uh, from the last two three decades that uh, the talent from india they are writing the original software they are the developers of software 
but the entrepreneur sitting somewhere in, the, in a, I mean, beyond India is labeling their trademark and marketing it. So uh, these core developer is getting very little out of his own efforts in terms of money, in terms of name and fame. So the topic which has been chosen is a very, very pertinent. And uh, the speaker uh, has been chosen is uh, again, it's very relevant because he, he is an alumni of this university and he knows uh, our weakness and our strength. He understands that what where, where it is lacking and I'm quite hopeful that he would be giving the advice which would be it not be theoretical, it would be very much practical because he knows in and outs. And he knows the world where uh, he's sitting in Santa Clara. I mean, uh, he's sitting in the, the top of, of uh, all this uh, entrepreneur in IT sector. So from there to a leader, it's a very nice combination. Um, just I want to add someone beyond this, I want to add one, uh, uh, one personal experience, I mean, of this few days. I'm actually working on, uh, on a document, 100 Years of Science, Faculty of Science. And for that, uh, for my own uh, contribution I was writing, I, was, uh, I read about that. I read about the Scientific Society of Sasayad Ahmad Khan. I was surprised to know because then I feel guilty that I didn't read it uh, up to this age, that Sasayad Ahmad Khan, before the day founder, he found, he, he established scientific society in 1864 and MAO College of Madhusur in 1875. So 11 years before of 1875, he established scientific society. And I will advise those who are in the league to visit Sasayad house and on the eastern side of it, you can see that lake of a scientific society. A room is dedicated for that see that and I when I read about that I was surprised that the vision of society was completely beyond of this contemporary time I mean even the 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 Britishers those who were involved in the scientific society they thought that society wants to establish a society which will translate uh, from English to Urdu the scientific works but later in the first uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, meeting of that society he made it clear that he, he wanted to create scientific temper, not translation only. He wanted to import gadget, I mean, uh, mechanical devices for agriculture, and he wanted to, to have mechanized agriculture in 1864. And the membership of the scientific society which he created was from Jammu to Calcutta. Jammu, Kapurthala, I mean, the Punjab, and uh, Eastern UP, Western UP, and uh, uh, Bihar, and uh, Calcutta. So I was, and it was across the religions, across the regions. He wanted to create a scientific a, a revolution which has changed Europe from uh, from from just an ordinary uh, citizen of the uh, of their countries to a ruler of a large colonies. So he realized the secret. That the secret lies with this. Uh, secret lies with that we study science, develop scientific temper, and apply that scientific uh, knowledge into real life. And he picked up the agriculture, and he imported gadgetry. It, he, it, through the scientific society, he, he uh, been organized public lectures, where they, they demonstrated uh, the, the, the equipment, the how to use it. But then when, when he got busy with this MU college, he, he could not continue with that, but what I'm saying that, uh, I mean, it's still today, in today, in 2021, it's still we are far from mechanized agriculture in, in, in all, all corners of India. And he thought of that thing in 1864. So we are the followers of that visionary who thought 100 years, rather than 100, I mean, 140 years, uh, 60 years beyond his time. And uh, so I'm very, uh, I mean, uh, happy that uh, Professor Asim Zafar and his team, they have chosen a very nice topic and he has selected a very nice speaker. And I am quite hopeful that inshallah, the participants will get benefited 
if i had time i would have joined it again i would have attended also but i am busy with that document thank you much for uh, giving me this opportunity and i wish all the best to you for this uh, webinar and the uh, and the uh, series which is going to uh, continuing and then i hope that you will have some more uh, webinars uh, ahead with, with the relevant topics thank you much and to that uh, thank you so very much sir thank you thank you so very much sir for your uh, words of wisdom your mentorship always gives us a lot of uh, encouragement and confidence uh, ladies and gentlemen i would now like to welcome our speaker today mr ahmedullah and to introduce him to the audience may i request the very polite popular and astute chairperson of the department of computer science and the convener of this event professor asim zafar saab it is indeed a proud moment for him as a teacher to introduce one of his illustrious student ladies and gentlemen professor asim zafar for you over to you sir thank you thank you dr aman asun faridi saab uh, am i audible yes sir yes sir respected professor qazi mazhar ali saab dean faculty of science amu eminent speaker mr ahmedullah from california usa respected professor m nafees ahmed ansari saab director center for distance and online education respected dr parvez mahmood khan saab director computer center mr saad hamid tpo amu all the esteemed faculty members of the department of computer science dr arman rasul faridi coordinator of this workshop our valued alumni from all across the world distinguished guests and participants assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all of you it's my great pleasure to welcome all the participants to the webinar on entrepreneurship in it sector on behalf of the department of computer science aligarh muslim university i extend a warm welcome to all of you i would like to use this opportunity to mention a special thanks to professor qazi mazhar ali sahab the dean faculty of science who despite his busy schedule has spared his valuable time to grace this occasion and with his benign presence sir your presence has always been a source of inspiration for us we value it we mean it welcome sir it's my pleasure to welcome professor mohammad nafees ahmed ansari sahab director center for distance and online education who has shown interest in this workshop professor nafees sahab has been instrumental in starting various skill oriented programs at the center for distance and online education with an aim not only to produce job seekers but job creators when he heard of this workshop he called me up and told that the topic of the webinar is very much relevant and is the need of the hour i extend a hearty welcome to you sir i would like to use this opportunity to welcome dr parvez mahmood khan sahab director computer center who is the linchpin of it services of this university we very much appreciate he is always ready to help nature and making all online events a reality by providing quality it services to university users thanks for your untiring effort i welcome to this webinar session sir i extend a warm welcome to mr saad hamid tpo of amu who has been putting sincere efforts in bridging the gap between industry and the university his effort along with his team in the placement of students even in this testing time is praiseworthy i welcome you mr saad dr arman has already talked about the aims and objective of this webinar series in very much detail so i would not take that much time in uh, mentioning the aims and objective of this webinar but i would like to add a few lines the department has started this series of webinar talks and workshop with an aim to educate them with recent technology trends and career prospects in it industry and for this purpose we have decided to rope in our distinguished alumni who are placed at very prestigious positions all across the world so that 
our students may interact with them and may see that the persons among themselves may have acquired such prestigious positions all across the world. Such interactions would certainly instill confidence in our student. So with this uh, main theme in our mind, we have started this series and I am very much thankful to our distinguished alumni who has extended all sort of supports and they are ready to interact with the students in the form of webinar or workshop, whatever possible uh, means are there. And uh, a lot of a lot of alumni have shown interest in this uh, uh, series of workshop and webinar. And one of them is Mr. Ahmedullah, who has uh, very readily agreed to our request and uh, voluntarily uh, have put forward him to give a webinar talk on this topic. So I very much appreciate the kind gesture of Mr. Ahmedullah, who is a proud alumnus of the Department of Computer Science, who despite his hectic schedule, agreed to share his experiences, interact with the students of AMU, and guide them to a better career prospects in terms of startups and entrepreneurship. I, on the behalf of the Department of Computer Science, Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh, extend a heartiest welcome to today's eminent speaker, Mr. Ahmedullah. Uh, Mr. Ahmedullah, born in Afzalgar district of Bijnor, and he did his primary education and intermediate education from UP board in his hometown. I am just mentioning all these things because you may see that a person amongst us, he is not a person who has been educated in convent media and he is educated in uh, outside the India and he is reached to this position. He is among us. He has been educated from the same system as we are having right now, and he has reached to the pinnacle of his uh, career. He completed his BSc Mathematics from AMU and uh, completed his MCA in 1996 from AMU, from this university as well. Mr. Ahmed has always shown academic excellence by being a topper in his class and secured gold medal in BSc honors. After completing his MCA, he moved to US in 1999 on H-1B visa and worked for a number of major IT companies in Silicon Valley, California, USA. He worked as a consultant for Oracle, HP, Facebook, Salesforce, Visa, Veriphone, Aero Electronics, Pella Windows, Shop NBC, and many more in California and throughout US. After gaining such a vast experience of working in IT industries, Mr. Ahmed founded his first startup called Zorasoft INC in 2006. Then he co-founded his second venture, Avior INC in 2010. Avior INC was an outcome of solving and simplifying complex single sign-on solution for Oracle ERP and other SML-based applications. Zorasoft, his first venture, is the first U.S. company to have business partnership with Bosch, a hundred plus billion dollar company in IoT in North America. Zorasoft and Avior INC, which has been founded by Ahmed, have many reputed direct clients like Salesforce, Facebook, Bosch, Visa, Equinix, Veriphone, and many more. Mr. Ahmed has 25 years experience of working in IT sector, including 22 plus years in US in multiple areas of IT solutions and infrastructure. In a nutshell, Mr. Ahmed has not only worked as a varied, not only has a varied experience of working in IT industry, but has experience of starting and running his own business. He is well suited to deliver a talk on the topic entrepreneurship in IT sector. I trust our students and the audience will be very much benefited. I would now like to invite Mr. Ahmedullah to please deliver his talk and thereafter interact with the students and the audience in question answer session. Ahmedullah. Thank, Thank you. you so very much. Over to you, over to you Mr. Ahmedullah. Okay. Am I audible? Am yes, I audible? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Asim Bhai. Uh, for a, such a, a nice introduction. I'm humbled and touched, and I'm very much, very happy to be back 
among all our you know university staff and our students this is the first time i'm interacting with such a uh, you know distinguished audiences after 24 years i haven't visited amu since 1997 i moved to us as you said i mentioned like 1999 and since then i have never got a chance to visit amu i'm very much i'm very happy to be back and before I start, uh, and thank you all the professors and Dean Saab and everybody. Uh, thank you all attending. And uh, before I start uh, the talk, uh, which is the hour of the need, as the Dean Saab mentioned, and we all know, I would like to rest assure all our participants that it is going to be, it is not going to be a sales pitch or anything. I'm trying, going to give you back as much as I can what my 25 years plus years experience is, what I have learned going through this very cumbersome process and complex process or, you know, tired, uh, tiring process of establishing two startup. Alhamdulillah, both of them are successful. Both of them are running. So I can rest assured. And also, please don't worry. Any question you are asking, I'm here. Uh, I will answer every question. Whatever question you have, I'll be more than happy to answer and share my experience. Okay. So let's get into, I put some slides, it's just for tracking. Uh, it's not like that I am going to, yeah. So this is, as we are, like the topic is today, entrepreneurship in IT sector, what it is, right? We are going to cover that. So what we will be doing it, that first I will cover what it takes to be an entrepreneur. And then I will talk my stories, how I started and I, how I took them to that level where they are today. And then food for thought for our AMU students and how university can take, can help and, you know, take uh, how our students can be successful in various areas. So I'm going to uh, go through that. So let's, uh, you're able to see, right, these things. So as we, uh, this is, you're, you're seeing that, right? All the slides are, Visible? No, currently it is not visible. Oh, it is not? Sorry about that. Yeah, let me share. Please share. Yes, I'm sharing. <clears throat> sharing. Sharing. Sorry about that. Share the screen for the Shreet now? It's, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it is. It is there. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can make it full. Yeah. Good. So today's uh, topic is entrepreneurship, right? We are going to talk about it. And uh, as I said, right, this will be just uh, what the ingredients are to be an entrepreneur and then what my story is about and what we can do to help the AMU and the other who are, uh, you know, in the IT sector and also uh, the students of computer science and other, if they want to be successful businessmen, right? So this is about me, Asimbai have introduced me and I am Ahmadullah, I live in San Francisco Bay Area, California. I came to US in 1999 and since then I have been, I'm lucky to be in one state for 22 years. Alhamdulillah, I have three daughters. We live in San Ramon. It's a one East Bay, uh, just about 30, 30 miles away from San Francisco. And if you want, you can reach me at this is my LinkedIn, and I will share my email also. So, what is entrepreneurship? We'll talk about it, right? So, entrepreneurship is like anything you start. When we can talk about our education or anything we are starting, right? We have to work hard in order to achieve something. Same thing is with entrepreneurship. Like, you know, you work hard today, you will be enjoying tomorrow. So this is a very famous quote that if you want to live, like most people won't be living, right? You have to work hard. Then you work hard today and you enjoy it tomorrow. That's the mantra for any entrepreneur or any business you start. This is, uh, and it is, uh, it applies for any level of entrepreneurship, whether it's small, big, and a large. 
you have to work hard in work hard in order to achieve something later so who are the entrepreneurs right this these are i mean everybody i say this all the time that everyone has entrepreneur inside them it is you need to recognize that you could be an entrepreneur and it is not necessary to have to be a big one i mean any level anything you start you could be an entrepreneur right so you recognize the opportunities where people are saying chaos and there are issues and all but you convert them into an opportunity and you know come up with an idea and implement it you want to make the change in the marketplace uh, people might be saying right i can give you an example right now it's the world is going through all the chaos right Every, throughout the world there is a pandemic going on and uh, you know there are so many opportunities we can think like for example there were there were many problems in the medical system the health system and the transportation so many things like at the aftermath of this pandemic is one of the issues which we are seeing is that transportation supply chain is big time impacted there could be problems there are problems everywhere we need to identify and these entrepreneurs are looking for those opportunities okay this is a problem i can solve it i can solve it and there could be a solution for it so they challenge themselves to create the future that's what that's where we are i'm sitting 8.5000 more than 8000 miles away from india my homeland and it is all because i came through the plane right it was invented people did it uh, developed it invented it and that's why rather than coming through the ship or anything right which used to take a couple of months uh, we can come to us in 18 20 hours right if you want to be so this is we are striving for a challenge and those entrepreneurs are for that right they strive they are continuously thinking that how to make the future better and most importantly all the entrepreneurs they have a passion you have to have a passion in order to be a successful entrepreneur it you cannot do things half hearted you know there will be challenges and i'll cover those but always be you know passionate about it what you are doing and then you know you will be successful so there are some misconception about entrepreneurship we all want to be a businessman after being here for 22 years i will cover that story right everybody you talk to in it they want to have their business so but and there are some misconception they will talk in our social gatherings they will talk and then they will just simply say that, that idea will die down next day they will think about something else so what are those misconception about the entrepreneurship like there are black and white some people say oh okay you have to have a great idea in order to be a successful entrepreneur no not necessarily we will cover that in coming slides but i can give you an example of facebook facebook is not a, a new idea there have been so many other ventures before that it's just like selling a old wine under the uh, in a new package right or anything old under new cover right so you you don't need to have a great idea it just uh, i mean you have to have uh, the you need to know what you are going to do basically right and then people say oh it's easy entrepreneurship easy no not necessarily it risky yes it could be risky but if you do a well thought you think about it it is not risky and then people say small business large business no you need to know what you are going to do and then some black like you know some which are the facts actually we most of us like coming from subcontinent here in us and then if you want to start a business right the major the most risk i have seen when i talk to uh, you know we being an entrepreneur we talk to other entrepreneurs and all and there are some people who started with us and in fact when i started some companies have gone to a much higher than what where we are today and some did not work out so there was always a risk the risk factor is there and employment security you cannot do uh, being in a full time job and all and you cannot start a business there is a risk there will be a social and family risk as well if you are a failure yes you will have to hear people will comment on you but you have to be ready for all those things and as i said in the beginning you have to have a passion and you need to know what you are going to do and what you are doing psychological pressure is also there like if you are a failure 
then yes, there will be a psychological pressure. You might be uh, losing uh, uh, money and other things. Some people even it has gone to their health, but you have to plan it properly and execute it properly. So these are the mis misconceptions. Okay, there is a mindset actually for entrepreneurs. And as I said earlier, that every one of us who are attending this session, we have an entrepreneur inside us. It's just that we need to identify it, identify the problem and plan to execute it, right? So like, you know, mindset, entrepreneur or starting a business is not just a mere creation. You need to look for opportunities. You need to go beyond your safe zone, your easy zone. Like I could be doing a nine to five job and then I come home and I'll be doing a social life. And, you know, as we know here, being in uh, West for 22 years, uh, we socialize every weekend. Sometimes we are going to others, so they're coming to us. And then we could be, that could be our safe zone. And we are fine in that nine to five job, so job. But, you know, you have to go beyond your safety zone in order to achieve something. And you have to have the tendency to solve the problems. And now how we can make something as a reality. It could be a thought, but we have to convert that thought into the reality. You have to take the calculated risk. Yes, I'm not suggesting that you just, uh, we have a family, we have you know extended families back home. You have to uh, do a calculated risk that, okay, if it doesn't work, what I have to do, what is next? You have to have a plan A, plan B, and plan C. Do it this way. This, again, it comes down, boils down to a well thought process. It's not like I have an idea and I can execute it and then you burn all your savings and then you're done. You're looking for it, right? So take it. And then the fundamental of, uh, you know, building a business is uh, basically you have to have the solid skills, right? And you develop it. No one is born with the solid skills, right? As you go across, but do a, put a plan, a well thought plan, right? You have to have a vision, right? And then look for those opportunities, which could be everywhere. I can say it could be in any walk of life. It has, it is not just in IT, but since we are in IT, we can solve those problems, right? So you try to look for those problems and then how to solve them using our uh, software or our skills. I can give an example, right? Most of us are, or, you know, from my batch, we were 35, like, you know, we are in IT, most of us, right? We are working somewhere. There are supply chain processes. There are month end, quarter end, year end. Those processes are there. We are generating reports and all. Look for the improvement chances. There are products. None of the products in the market are perfect. There is still, that's why there is a new innovation, new product is coming, which is obsoleting the old ones and all, right? So look for these opportunities and then try to come up with something which can help the customers, right? So move on to the next one, the importance of entrepreneurship. What are those? We need to, there are various kinds of entrepreneurship and what is important that innovation, developing something ground up. There was no product before. You are trying to develop something which is new, brand new. But you know, that takes time. I will cover that, what are the examples and all in coming slides. So you have to think whether, are you ready? I mean, for example, there has to be a well thought that, okay, if I'm going to develop something, it's gonna take X amount of years, and then this will be the impact if it doesn't work and all. So again, right, what we are going to do, there are various types of entrepreneurship also, I'll cover that. New startups, right? We can do the new startups. And those are product systems, right? You can do the product process innovation. You come up with the product, like uh, I have one of the products which we developed along with the Zora Soft Aviarink, which we've covered, right? Job creation. So this is a very important thing, right? When, when you are on a, an entrepreneur, what you are doing, you're not just helping yourself. I always say this, that if we don't think being a responsible citizen, or responsible human being, then who will develop the, uh, create the jobs for our government? No matter which country you live in, I live in West, right? The most advanced country in US, but not all the jobs are created by the government of US. 
it's all created by the entrepreneurs. Some of them are having 100,000 employees, some more than that, right? And these are all created. We need to, uh, we, when we find and create a successful venture, then you will be generating jobs for many, right? So you are helping your communities, your regions, your nations, right? Wherever you live. So this is another way of looking at the entrepreneurship that you want to help people, your own country, your people, your society, everybody. And obviously you will get benefited yourself, no doubt about it. Right? And what is the impact? You, you want to make a big impact? So what are the characteristics of an entrepreneur? Let's talk about that. So these uh, entrepreneurs have to have, I'm not saying all of them, but they are different. And, and as you, we all have it, but when they are executing something, you will see them and try to analyze, right? They have, uh, they have a commitment and determination. This is very important. You have to have a commitment. You will be doing a sacrifice. You may not have the weekend, as I said before, nine to five job, nine to five job you may not have. Sometime you will be working uh, day and night and your weekends will be spoiled. I mean, they will be destroyed. Your family may not be happy. Your kids may not be liking it, but you have a commitment. You want to do it. And you have a drive to achieve something, right? You have a persistent problem solving, right? If you are trying to solve a problem, you may not find the solutions. You take any innovations like uh, I didn't, uh, founding bulb and all those things. Those were not found overnight. It is a persistent effect, uh, you know, their efforts you know, when they found this, right? And when you are doing something, you should be seeking a feedback. Am I doing it right? You might, you thought when you founded something or you came up with an idea two years ago, but that could be obsolete today. Are you heading in the right direction? You have to have those things, right? You should be tolerating the ambiguity. Something is wrong in your product or the thing which you are doing. You cannot change it overnight. You have to think it that, okay, my release one is now today when I'm going to release release two, then I have to solve all these ambiguities and all right. You have to have those. And, you know, all these self confidence. You should be knowing what you're going to do. You believe in yourself and you are independent. And then definitely you'll be doing a team team builder, right? You have to be team building because you, when you founded something, you were just by yourself. And now, as you are growing, people are adding up, right? You are growing. Then you need to be a good team player. You will, you will not be a CEO or a founder of an entrepreneur or, 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 or an entrepreneur. In the beginning, you don't, don't have funds. And you are not going to be uh, VCs. You are yourself. And then other people will join if you are a good team player. They like you. So you, will have to, you might have to mend your ways in order to be so that you attract other people. And you have to tell them, like, what is the benefit if you join me? Right? So what do they do, entrepreneurs? They have a creative thinking. And they do the systematic analysis. That's a mantra for success. Very successful if you, like, you know. So, but not necessarily that this is 100%. You have to go for uh, finding a bulb and all, all those things, right? This is a basic, well, you know, 100% success mantra is that if you are doing this. But for us, the topic is today IT, where we don't have to have a very beautiful mind or creative thinking and all. We can focus on small problems and then we try to solve them and still we could be successful. And you will see that when I share my story. Right? So we need to look for the opportunities and what are the wants for the sector which we are working in. It could be in supply chain, you name it. It could be in university AMU itself. There could be so many things. There will be so many softwares being used, but there could be a chance of improvement everywhere. And you come up with that idea. You develop it for one university, and then you take it to the other universities. That's how the products are developed and sold. And who will do it? It is us who will do it, right? So turn the you know opportunities or problems into opportunities with the passion. Passion is the key. And what it is solving a problem or recognizing a problem to solution is similar to what is the demand to supply. There's a simple analogy. You solve the problems and, you know, 
then you are basically meeting the demand. And this is, I borrowed it, uh, this slide. I borrowed it, I would like to spend some time here, then never give up. There will be opportunities and I, I have gone through it. So you don't give up in between. When you started something, you took a calculated risk, you well thought about it, then you know you never give up and then take it to success. And what we are going, so let's say, the first thing is, is stay alive. Being in West for 22 years and coming from an Indian background, like I grew up, my parents, forefathers and all, like here, they, you are never old. You are never old and it's never late to start anything. This is one scenario uh, we talk about that, you know, if you are 30 year old and 60 years span, you're going to life, life expectancy, it's, it's too high. I would say let's lower it by 70 to 75. Still, if you are going to work for 40 years and you have an idea to execute for three months, you divide 40 into three, uh, four, like you still have 160 shots to try, but you have to have the passion to do that, right? And it's never late. And you know, as long as you're alive, everything is possible. Go with this thought. Everything is possible and you can do it. And I'll give an example. Zach, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, he found uh, Facebook uh, in his 20s. He was one of the luckiest one and you, he found it. But look at the Warren Buffett, the sixth richest person in the world. He's 90 year old. He's having he's still the same passion. 90 year old, 100 plus billion worth and it's still the same. So it's never late, right? It's all your drive and you can do it, right? And lower your expectations. What is the meaning of it? Like we know we come at cricket frenzy uh, uh, country. I mean, we have seen Sachin Tendulkar failing so many occasions. Ra uh, Virat Kohli is failing on so many occasions. They still continue driving it. Michael Jordan, the great of basketball, he missed 300 shots. And some of them were like equivalent to losing a World Cup cricket final. Here it is a, a NBA final, right? Uh, basketball final, right? So, and it's a 99.99. I would say at 39, success took time. It doesn't come overnight. You have to keep trying till you succeed. And you are stronger. One thing I'll cover, like you are stronger than what you think you have ingredients inside you and you are don't don't underestimate yourself i'm telling it to everybody every one of us who is attending the seminar or webinar we all have something some fire inside us it's just that we need to identify it and go after those right so you know that the great paul graham he's not the not the one which is a lisp language founder it's someone essayist he says that Try a lot, lot of different things, and this come back to like uh, when I said 160, uh, you know, iterations or projects you can work on. So try, keep trying different things, and then one of them will succeed. And this is in industry, uh, we always say that that fake the success till you make it, till it is real. I'm not saying you lie, but when you're going to the customers, they will ask you what you have. You have to tell them that this is the solution. And I have tested in my lab, you know, different type. I'm not saying lie, don't, don't, but you know, you have to be confident and say, yes, it will work. And as long as you are confident, it will work. And another thing in entrepreneurship is never ever compare yourself with others because grass is always greener on the other side. You don't know what they have gone through. We always talk about billionaires. We don't know what they have gone through. Their stories could be, you know, different. They have gone through it. And also the dip, remember, before every success, you will go through the worst. And I have seen it. I'll share when I go to my list. So as I said before, believe in yourself. This is for every one of us. We are braver than what we believe. We are stronger than what we seem and is smarter than what we think. Every one of us. It's not like that if someone is successful or no, every one of us. And we are loved more than we know. We are. So you have to believe in yourself. 
and then some positive affirmation that I believe everything is possible, you know, I can do it, I can take the risk, and all those things, right? Believe uh, it's never too late. And I said, I just said before in the previous slide that it's never late. You can have an idea at any age. I could be 70 year old and I can still have an idea or 80 year old and we can still talk about it and I can still try to convert that idea into a business opportunity. And people do it. There have been stories. People have done it. So it's never late. You just need to think about it and discuss it, do a proper research and try to execute it. So we say it, I create, I learn, I grow, I do, and I'm an entrepreneur. This is said about the uh, founders and all. Yeah. So this is what I was talking about before that, you know, what are the various types of innovations, right? Invention. And when we are trying to find a solution, you don't need to uh, do a ground up story, right? That totally new product. We don't need to try to find a uh, altogether different, right? We are trying to develop an aeroplane or anything, you name it, right? You don't need to. I mean, these are inventions, right? Right, Wright brothers did the aeroplane and then light bulb, Thomas Edison's and Graham Bell telephone and all. It took ages for them to develop, right? It took time, but there could be an innovation for that area also. What we are going to cover here, it could be an extension or duplication, right? So what is an extension, right? There are existing things. You're trying to do it differently, right? Like McDonald, McDonald, when it was founded, it was not the first one. There are so many already similar kind of stores in that business, fast food business. He came up with an idea and then he just did an extension. Facebook is the best example. When we came here in early 2000, I'm sure many of my uh, class fellows, right? Batchmate are here, who are here are about 10, 15, who must be on the session or webinar. We all have gone through it. We, most of us landed in 99 or 2000. There were, Facebook came in like 2006 or 2007, but before that it was MySpace, then Friendster, then Google started Orkut in 2004. And Zuckerberg didn't have any idea. He just have the Facebook, he tried to make it simple and all. And then look at it, extension where it is right now, a trillion dollar company, right? And then same thing is about the hotels, the Starwood hotels. Then duplication, like you can be doing it. You are, let's say some, we are in IT or in the field of computer, we are using some product. They might be doing something similar thing. You come up with an idea and try to develop it. And it could be a duplication of something, but you are doing it differently. Let's say something is taking 10 hours to run. Your process is taking five hours. You are not doing those complex things, right? And there are examples like Walmart, Gateways and all Pizza Hut. These are all duplications. And then synthesis, right? Like FedEx, what we can do, combination of existing concept and factors and then come up with an idea. So those things, right? You can identify it in any of these categories and then you can try to solve it. There are myths about innovations. First myth, right? It's a plan and predictable. No, it is not planned. You could have a solid idea. You could still fail. And I'll give you an example. Orkut. Google founded Orkut in 2004. Facebook was founded in 2007 or so. If you look at search and Google it, it was very popular in India. In fact, some of the people used to say that Google is owned by Orkut. Google could not take it to the next level what Facebook went. A college graduate wrote something from his dorm, Mark Zuckerberg, and took it to that level, right? So you don't have to have a plan, something. I mean, a company like Facebook could not take it, and then eventually they had to put that, they had to kill that product, right? So technical specifications and everything should be well thought. No, not necessarily. When you have a rough idea, raw idea, in order to convert it into a product, it will be a lengthy process. It will be an iterative process. It will take time. You you talk about any product uh, like you know Oracle, the other databases, or you you name any of the things. The first release was not perfect. It took time. It took time. So similar could be the story with your product. You cannot deliver a perfect product in first go. It will take time, right? And then big projects will develop better innovation than a smaller. No, there is no uh, quantification, right? That oh this is big and a small. No, a smaller idea could be a better than uh, the bigger one and all. And 
So you need to have the myth number five here, right? So we have the, you have to have a great technologies in order to have a big innovations, not necessarily. You could still be using DOS and uh, all those primitive things and you can come up with a, a great idea. So these are the myths, right? So now I will talk about my venture, uh, what we are, and you know, it's going to be totally unsc unscripted, not, it's going to be just as is the story is what I have gone through and how I identify, you know, found them and all and how, where they are, how we reach to the level where they are today, right? So as Asim, Asim Bhai introduced me, I am a founder of two uh, ventures, two C Corp. Uh, first is Zora Soft. This was founded in 2006. I came to US in 1999. And uh, I, like the other, most of us come here on H1B, we came, got the green card and all. And the, mis the one thing which I did, I have been in, out of 22 years, I have been consultant throughout my, throughout my life. So when I came here and, and I joined, I thought, you know, that's got the green card and all, let's try to join a full time. And at that time, even Google was founded. So this company I joined, its name was WISE, W-Y-S-E. And uh, they said it's going to be an ex-Google. I was trapped in that. And I started that because they said you're going to be so and so and so many people reporting and all. But in one and a half year, I realized they are making me work more than equivalent to four hours, uh, four people. And then I said, no, it's not going to work. So then we decided, no, I want to start my own. And if I have to work extra hours, I will be doing it for myself, not for just someone else for a full time. That was... And then I had some ideas also that, you know, these uh, consultings, we are doing it, they are getting from, you know, Infosys, GCS, Wipros, and all those. Like, how can we find something which is unique and how we can help the people, right? Because any manager you talk to, they want to have someone that who could solve their problems. All these companies, they might be having their beautiful marketing and, you know, well accomplished MBAs and all, they can sell anything. They can sell the fridge to the Eskimos. We say that all the time, but who will be solving their problem? So you prove yourself to the customers that if I give an opportunity to this small company, there is someone, you know, or it is backed by so-and-so and who can solve our problems. And you may not be getting a big customers. You will, be st you will have to start with a small one and then you will be going that. So, and then over a period of time, we managed, I will show the list of our customers that uh, in 2006, we found it. And then after that, I had tough time. Uh, it was not going moving through and nobody talks uh, about the small companies, actually. Nobody talk. If you are one single person, you are doing your own consulting and all. So you go through a very tough process. You no matter what problem you have solved and all, they will give you an opportunity for one month and two months, but in order to penetrate it and take it to a next level, it's a very tough task. Okay. So you have to go through that, but you should know like what you are trying to achieve. It will work. You should not give up. There was an occasion for a couple of years, actually three, four years that I used to put my own W uh, income, hard -earned income into the zero soft expenses. So, but there was no give up. You have to do it. And in between, yeah, then the second venture came up in between, right? So the zero soft 2004, uh, six, and after that, I had a friend, we were talking about, we were trying to solve a problem. And then uh, we said, okay, this is a problem, we should solve it. And that's when we got the idea that, okay, let's come up with a second venture and we will uh, separate the work, right? What they should be doing it. So then uh, during a period of time, what the niche consulting and the ideas we have developed as ZoraSoft in last 20, 15 years, we completed 15 years on June 6th, actually, uh, that, we developed our own methodologies, our own product over a period of time, and we go anywhere and we just apply them. And, you know, the clients are happy. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example. I was consulting at Facebook in 2013 to 2016. Every, and this is, it can apply to all of us actually, everywhere there are auditors. It's a small problem. And, but if you solve it, the client will recognize that what you want to do. So. Anywhere you are in any company, auditors want your password to be rotated every quarter. And it's a painful thing. And it's not just one system. There are hundreds of systems. 
So we came up, Zorosoft came up with an idea that, okay, you don't need to rotate the password every quarter. And they asked, they took, I was there on that project and they took me to the uh, whiteboard and they said, okay, tell us why. I said, okay, even if you have the password, you will still not be able to log into the system. We came up with a solution and then, you know, they recognized it and they got the exception that, okay, you don't need it. So similar thing, right? You, all of you who are in IT, you can identify similar problems and solve for your customers. They will recognize you and they will give you an opportunity to do work. And this is like the work of three years, which we did, I did, and one or two more consultants at Facebook. They managed to get, and they recognized our hard work and they gave us a direct mentorship. Zorosoft is a direct vendor at Facebook. Same is the story at Salesforce and all those things. It's all what we are doing for them, right? So uh, 2006, we founded it. 2009, we said, okay, we want to solve another problem. And that was a single sign-on. Uh, so I met a friend and then we said, okay, we can come up with the product. We applied for a patent. So this is the story about Zorosoft. Now I want to, another thing about Zorosoft is like fast forward. Uh, we do a niche consulting in various areas. And then the big thing happened for us in 2019. When we were looking for a partner, Bosch, we all know Bosch, they are into various things like home. Everybody knows about uh, every car. They say that 70% of the Bosch uh, parts in any car are Bosch, right? They're a big company, German based, 100 plus billion dollar company. Zorosoft is the first company to have an, a partnership, partnership in North America with Bosch. We are dealing with them in IoT, Internet of Things. So Alhamdulillah, that happened to us. And we are very happy 2019. Now coming back to the next venture. Oh yeah, these are our combined clientele. And some of the customers, they don't want to put their name. So this is the client we have. And again, I'm telling, if I can manage you all from computer science department, from AMU, from other universities who have joined, you all can do it. It's not tough. You all can do it. It's doable and we can do it. So have that uh, believe in yourself. You will succeed. So these are like Avia Inc. So Avia Inc is a product company and I'm a co-founder of it. What we do, I'll give you an example, as I said before, that for three years I was at Facebook, 2013 to 16, 90% of their outages were because of the single sign-on solutions they were using. And every company in ERP system or anywhere you go, these are the big companies, enterprise, they have their solution. And what are they trying to do? This is another angle to look at the problems. We as an IT consultant or as an employee, I'm not saying you have to be a consultant. Being an employee also, you can still see the problem and you will be growing in a different way, right? You will be growing if you are solving, you're helping your uh, company, then you will be growing in that ladder, right? You can still identify. So what I have noticed that these companies, when they are uh, the big companies, when they are selling their solution, and if they are a uh, product based like database companies or other enterprise company, they are selling their licenses also. It is not just the software they're selling. Like Oracle solution, single sign on. They are not just selling the Oracle SSO, but they are selling the database license, the web logic, uh, the um, application server licenses and so many licenses. So it's, it costs a lot of money. So we try to solve it. So then this guy, Sachin Shetty, so Sachin, who is my uh, partner in that, so he said, Ahmed, we are trying to solve it. He's a very good Java developer. And this is how we can leverage and partner up with others. We all cannot be good in one a all areas. You could be good in databases. Someone could be good in a designing. Someone could be doing in a UI and all. Team up, sit together and they say, hey, I have this idea, but I need a Java developer. I need this guy to design it and then do it. So similar thing, we were, we were doing this solution and uh, he was struggling at, he was a consultant somewhere. So he said, Emma, do you want to solve a problem? I said, okay, let's sit. Then uh, we did a POV, POC, proof of concept in my lab. And by that time, Zorosoft had started making some money. And by the way, both the companies, we never got any fundings. These are all self-funded. So then he said, uh, uh, let's do it. I said, yeah, 
we developed something, it started working, and then it said, now the problem is how to go to a customer who will buy us. So I had a customer, I talked to that guy, the director. I said, hey, we, uh, so when I was doing their product, uh, their EBS upgrade, uh, so then I told him, hey, uh, we developed something, you want to do the single sign-on, and you could not do it because you were running out of time. We have something for you, and it's much cheaper. He said, okay. He agreed. I had to beg a request and talk to him. Hey, because when you are in a starting phase, you will have to go through it. Your ego, I'm not saying you beg literally, but there will be a tough moment for you. They will not be listening. You call them, they will, they will hung up on you. You will have to go through a different thing. And being from a legal background, right, we have some. So you have to be calm and, you know, just be patient. Patience is the main thing, like one of the things in addition to passion also. So then he agreed, but he said, I will take your product, but I will not pay you because I'm giving a reference. And we were desperate. We said, okay, take our product. And this we were talking about 2009. They agreed and they helped us to develop our product and they took our product. They implemented it. And it was such a nice thing, very light solution compared to what we are our competitors are. And then we were in parallel, we were working on a patent. We got our patent in 2013. So we have our product and all, we started working, we demoed at various places. And then recently, so it's a, we are competing uh, with directly with Oracle Enterprise. And uh, recently we replaced Oracle single sign-on at Visa. It was our biggest win. We are talking Salesforce and they are also not happy with so many moving components, so, such a complex solution. We are talking to that. And for both the companies, we have been approached multiple times to acquire. Just to let you know. So this is uh, about the ventures. Thanks by the grace of uh, grace of Allah Almighty, both of them. I'm lucky that we started to, and then both of them have been successful. And another thing I'll tell you that when you are having, we'll be moving to a incubator, a different area, which is all uh, focused on you guys. I'll tell you one thing that when you are so busy and you're are having a successful venture uh, right under you, then you have to plan it properly, right? If you, people will approach you, they will say, okay, I want to take you to the next level, but I need so-and-so uh, equity in you. Are you ready? I mean, those who are in uh, America or North America, and I think in India also, there could be some program there. They will talk like Shark Tank is there. You go to them, you ask for money, they will ask for a big equity in you, right? So then you need to know, like, what I'm selling it and what I'll be making it. And then when you have the revenue coming in, that revenue should be working for you. It's not like, so this is the story about both the ventures. Alhamdulillah, we have good customers. We have been doing it. We have been talking to others and we want to take it. So now this is the story, what the entrepreneurship and is all, but how I can help aim you and our students, our department. So this is the next topic I'm coming to, right? And we all, I request, I urge everyone that this is incubator, right? What we can do as an incubator. So incubator is basically you have the ideas. This is a pre-VC venture capitalist stage, right? So you could be, you are doing MCA or you're doing BSc engineering, right? You could be final year, second year or third year, whatever year you are. And we have seen so many problems. I can correlate with the like pandemic we are going through so many lapses we have seen, right? It could be a medical problem, you know, medical is not getting supplies and all. You think about it. You try to develop something, right? You might be having an idea. Being a student, you may not have, you may not have those funds, right? You need funds. You discuss the ideas and then you come up with like three, four guys or whatever it is. And one thing in partnership is you have to have the like-minded people. It is not like that if it is not working, then they will leave you. You have to have that. Otherwise, uh, give a well thought and then do the partnerships and all, right? Because they don't want to leave you in between, right? So this incubator is basically what they do. They listen to your ideas and it just, your, you have the ideas, you need to develop it. If you go to the venture capitalist or any investors, they will not talk to you till they see the what is the working product, right? 
So in that case, right, you have the idea and then you try to, you're trying to realize that idea into reality, right? So in that case, you reach out to these incubator, what they do, they help you to fund. We call it a seed funding, initial funding. And then they, you will, your idea will be into some of form of POV, proof of validation or proof of, uh, you know, concept. You take them and these incubators are there throughout the world, tens of thousands incubators throughout the world. Just search this, Google this word. They will give you their facilities. I mean, they will give you the money to have the office, or if you are working from home, they will provide you the laptop. They will, they'll, they talk and all, and obviously they will ask for the equity, but they are not as aggressive as the venture capitalist are. Right? So there are so many incubators throughout the world, and I'll tell you what those incubators are. Right? So for example, right? Let's go here. So what is incubation, right? Or incubator, like this is, uh, we say that it's an innovation, entrepreneurship, networking, competitiveness, this is all it takes, right? So you have a startup, they give you the facility, they are the investors and it's a cycle, right? Till you develop, they will be working with you. And then if an idea is great, they will help you. And then you have something, obviously they will have equity. And then you'd go and talk to the second round of funding and all. Right? And Zorosoft can help. I can help you with that. Right? So there are so many incubators. And that's where, you know, I want to encourage all the AMU students and their staff here. We have so many professors and big, uh, uh, you know, uh, department heads and all. I request, I humbly request all of you that if we help our student, right, with the help of us who are, uh, you know, sitting outside and, you know, we, have done something, achieve something. We are ready to help you, or our university, right? I am. I was more than happy when Arman Bai reached to me that, hey, Ahmed, we want to do this. I said, yeah, I want to give back. And this is the first time in 23 years or 24 years I am giving something to Amy. Otherwise, I was working for myself. And whatever all of us are sitting anywhere, it is all because of Amy, right? Amy is the one which gave us something, uh, gave us, and we are sitting or we are successful in our areas, right? So there are so many IITs, IIM and all, they are doing some incubator program where they are helping. Similarly, uh, AMU can do that too, British students, right? So I request, and then we are there to guide our students, our uh, placement, you know, or innovation group if you have, uh, uh, or department of excellence or all. Yeah, I'll be more than happy to help uh, in your, uh, as a guide or whatever you call it. I will be more than happy to guide our students and help them like how to succeed in their life. And believe you me, uh, like when we were there, it was not that innovative as it is today. Right? Being in university and all, I remember when we were doing the MCA, we have to wait and book the computer and Windows 95 was very new at all. Like the things have changed drastically now. Being in university, you can develop things. And it has been happening in US and IITs and other universities. And our AMU have the best uh, you know, facilities and infrastructure and all. So leverage them, leverage them. And this is the best place to come up with an idea. Like you, because when you go, being a student, you can develop things, come up with an idea. And ideas, it's all ideas. Convert those ideas into reality and reach out and we will help. There are so many on this call, uh, friends of uh, my batchmate and all, they are also successful in their life. We all are here to help you guys, right? That's how we want to give you back or give my university back. So these are the Silicon Valley incubators. Most of the uh, startups here in Silicon Valley, which is called the hub of innovation, you name it, everything from hardware to software, most of the things are happening here in Northern California, which is we call Silicon Valley. Uh, all the headquarters and everything is here. So there are so many incubators. If you are sitting in India, I mean, it's easy or anywhere in the world, you are having an idea, you share it, I can help you. Uh, we connect you with them, we take your ideas, and then once they agree, we can make it into a reality, right? We can have a POC and all, and we can go there. So there are so many, like Y Combinator is a very well-known, they have done so many and all. And then, so these are, if you want, I can send it to uh, Arman Bhai or uh, Asim Bhai. Uh, they can have it. You go ahead. Uh, these are the seed funding provider worldwide. Uh, in India also, they will do. 
if you are there anywhere in the Middle East, you have some idea, reach out to them, go to their websites, you will see what they are doing. Because one of the things which I always say that you don't want to uh, put all the eggs in one basket. Let's say you're developing something and you have some X, Y, Z amount in your, I, I have seen that actually, that a uh, couple of friends I know, they said, okay, I want to quit my job. Uh, so we are talking about, do you want to do, I want to quit my job and then, oh, I will work on my product. I said that what will happen to your bills? He said, that's what I have fundings and it didn't work. After two years, they're broke. So you have to do the calculated risk and all. And as I was saying that student life in the initial year of your IT career or anywhere you're in IT or in a product or software development, those are the crucial year, precious year of your life. Because once you are married, you have kids and all responsibilities comes and all. And but you know it's never late. But at that time you have the responsibilities, right? So you will have to think that if it doesn't work, right? Or how many times I can do. So those things. So this Y combinator is there. They do the seed funding worldwide. Then you have in Bay Area uh, this website, right? Uh, you can reach out to them. I, we can help. And then Zorosoft. No. Can you make your slides in the slideshow mode? Basically, it will have the better visibility. Sure, sure. I can do that. I can do that. Sure. Sorry about that. Yeah. So, Zoro, yeah. And uh, I call, I mean, we invest also, Zorosoft, we invest into uh, different, different things, right? And as I was saying, as I was saying that once you succeed and you have the revenue coming in, then you start diversifying it, right? So we do, and these are the companies, these are our friends, my friends companies, and we know them. These are all have gone through this incubator and uh, they are successful. I know of one friend, he started same time and his product simpler, I didn't mention it here. It's a $60 million worth company right now. Uh, he just developed it this way. They have gone through it. They just had the ideas, they converted into a reality. And these are like, you know, uh, these are successful incubator and they have gone to a various round of fundings and all and you know they will be successful so we know them right so this is about incubator and you are more than help uh, welcome uh, it's the uh, email is info at zorosoft.com please reach out to me i can give my email address also and uh, believe you me i'm ready to share uh, or give you i am willing to give uh, to my alma maters, to you guys, whatever small success we have, I'll be more than happy to help you and guide you guys. So any question and all, we can open it up. This is all about me. Please feel free. I will try to answer every question you can ask in any language. I mean, Urdu, Hindi, and English. Please don't hesitate. Ask me any question you have. Yeah. Arman, right? And I'll, I'll share these slides and some more references, like what it takes. So again, I want to summarize it. What I'm saying is that entrepreneur and all these are good, but anywhere you're working, please look for the problems, solve them. And then once you solve them, you have the solution. Try to make it as a, like either the consulting that you, it's a niche thing, which nobody has it, or you try to make it as a product. So, you know, please always be on lookout. You will find something. And as I said multiple times, every one of us is an entrepreneur. It's just that we need to look for an opportunities and execute it. Go ahead, please. That's all from me. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ahmadullah Saab, for a very interesting presentation. Uh, sure. Audience, uh, uh, we are now ready for question and answer session. And I have few questions with me. I'll be asking one by one. Uh, and Arman, by I can uh, just sorry to interrupt you. I can go to any slide of it, and if they have question, I'll be more than happy. Any question they can ask, please feel free. Right, right, right. The first question that I have received. Uh, two questions. I'll cut a club them together. First question is: Is the process of starting a business? Uh, a startup same in India and US. Uh, and similar question is. Sansab, you, Arman, sir, may I interrupt you, please? Uh, sir, before please. you start the question answer session, I would like to read the comment from Deem Sahab, uh, and he is writing on the chat box. 
uh, it was so interesting that I couldn't leave the meeting and has to reschedule my tasks. So you can, Ahmadullah, you can take it as a compliment and Dean Saab was stuck throughout your talk uh, over there. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Also, also so humble and touch. Comment, yeah. uh, comment from uh, Saad Hamid, who is the training and placement officer of uh, this university. He is writing, uh, dear Mr. Ahmad, it was an inspiring talk. As a TPO, I need to ask you, is there any opportunity for online internship? Live project for our students. So that is the uh, question which you can take it uh, later on. Uh, but these sure. are some of the uh, some of the uh, comments, remarks, or comments you can say uh, for your talk. Uh, now, uh, uh, Arman, you may please uh, continue for your question. Please. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, so, first question is: uh, Is the process of starting a business or a startup same in India? and us and similar question i'll collect them together do rules for starting a company change from place to place so ahmed bhai over to you uh, is the so, process of starting uh, a business the same in india uh, as far as yeah sure as far as uh, i haven't started anything in uh, actually i had a offshore i still have an offshore but we do it through a partnership program there are some different rules it's much easier to start a company here but uh, if someone is having a company in US, in India and they want to bring it, they want to have a presence in US, there are ways to do it. Uh, some investors, they will have to come through that or well-established organization or companies here and they can still operate in US. So it's a little bit different. I don't know how it works in India, but I know ins and out of US. But it is doable. If you have a company in India, it can very well work in US and you can have a US customers. Yeah. Please. Okay. Uh, next question is, uh, what are the essential ingredients for starting our own venture in IT sectors? I mean, what kind of skill sets, employees, etc., are required? Okay. So the very first one is identifying the problem. There is in 22 years or last 25 years, what we have seen that there is a product for every single thing, right? So you need to know what you are trying to achieve. If you want to start up any company in consulting and all, what different thing you are bringing to the table? And I'll give an example. I was approached, I was talking to one manager of a company, I don't want to mention the name, and he asked me a question. Very challenging question is asked me very politely. We are on a, a lunch table. He said, Ahmad, why should I take the staff from you or why should I give you the project to you? And I said, why? He said, I can go to Infosys, TCS, Wipro and all these guys. I take a resource. If they make a mistake, they are ready to give me a replacement and they will not charge me for the uh, weeks uh, which that guy has, uh, you know, wasted and all and the replacement period. So why should I buy? Why should I take something from you or give you the project? Then I was prompt. I said, okay, well, if they are messing it up, they can give you the resource, but what is the guarantee the second resource will be bad or uh, will not be bad? Here, you are dealing with me. You know that if my consultant will mess up something, you are giving me a data database field or performance tuning, my core, core expertise, I will solve the problem for you. You know that, right? I'm one con away. So similarly, if you want, you're looking for ingredients, I would suggest identifying problem is the key. Once you are, you know what you are solving it and there is a need of it. And another thing which I say all the time that please do not focus on one thing. And I'll give an example. There is a cloud era right now. And we all know there are so many big players in cloud, right? You have Amazon, you have Google, you have uh, so many, right? Top five. When you are developing a solution, it should be agnostic. It should, you should not be developing a solution just for Google. It should be cloud agnostic. That is, it can work in all cloud. If you take that solution, and this is another uh, uh, trend which we are noticing, that none of the client has just one cloud in their premises. They always have two, three clouds, uh, partners there, uh, or competitors. They will have Google, they will have Oracle, they will have uh, Azure, everything, right? They want to create it. So if you are going and taking a solution or developing a solution, please keep that in mind. That is agnostic. So yeah, uh, Arman, by the, the answer is that you need to know 
what problem you are trying to solve. And once you know that, then you know you try to develop a POV yourself first. And once you have it, then take it from there. Thank yeah. you, uh, thank you, Ahmed. My next yeah. question. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. It is uh, somebody. Someone is asking that. What do I need to do to focus on while pursuing my studies to start a business? Hmm. Very good question, actually. And this is what I want. The purpose of my call and giving back is this only that this is the right age rather than, and I have done it right? going and having a chai and doing those discussions and all right. And talking about like, oh, the food quality is not good and all that. The ideas, right? Those time, which we are wasting, we should convert and, you know, that energy, we should put it into something uh, constructive and come up with an idea. So it's like. Uh, being studied for six years at AMU, right? You still have time. So you have to be proactive and divide your time properly. And then when you have the ideas, right? You, I, I'm not saying you quit your study, justify it and then divide your time slot uh, that, okay, this is the problem I want to work on. And then how much time I want to put on this product or on this idea, right? And there are guides, right? We have Alhamdulillah, a well-established, uh, you know, TPO, PTO uh, placement and training office and our professors are there and all they are there to guide. So, yeah, you can still do it. Thank you. Uh, uh, next question is, uh, can you suggest some areas in IT where there is more scope of becoming a good entrepreneur? I think you have sure. covered part, 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 no, part I but I, I would like to elaborate it. Actually, this is yeah. And I wanted someone to ask it very good question. This is the time of. Uh, I'll take I'll go a step back. And we all there are so many, uh, you know, my batchmate and, you know, senior people are there on this. We have seen the trend in software industry or hardware also in last 20 years, 25 years. Trends have changed on prem. Nobody wants to own the hardware and nobody wants to have anything in their promises, premises or in their own buildings. Everything is moving to SaaS. Software is a business. Everything is cloud, right? Like 15 years ago, it used to be just Salesforce CRM. Right now you name it and I'll give an example. You have a laptop, but there are hardly very few people who will be having the MS office installed on it because Google is giving you for 69.99 the whole the uh, office pack to you. You have Google Word, you have Google PowerPoint, you have Visio and all. Those are not just the proprietaries of uh, Microsoft anymore. You just go. So what is that Google Doc? It's a SaaS model, right? You don't need to have even Facebook, even uh, Microsoft is having also having the SaaS model. So the best area at this point of time, I would suggest is cloud. Any name you cloud, right? You develop those skills in and around cloud. And then, you know, when you are getting ready, like our guys, our students who are in first year, second year, they three solid years. You know, you start thinking, I know you have to clear the exam and all, but start reading about it. The way the market, uh, you know, where the industry is heading. You develop in and around um, uh, about. And I always say this, and I'm repeating it, agnostic to cloud. Any concept you're learning or developing and all, please, it should be applicable to all the clouds. So cloud is one good area. And then the other area, which is niche, right? It's AI and ML, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Those are everywhere. And uh, data scientist is another area. But, you know, those takes time. So I would say as a startup, go into the cloud field. Any cloud you get an entry, that's the best for you guys. Yeah, please go ahead. Come Thank on. you. Thank you. Uh, next question is. <laughs> a good question. Uh, uh, someone is asking that I don't have much money. Can I still start a company and how? So oh, very good. So third section of my presentation incubator is all about that. You have the idea. You come up, you write your idea very well that, okay, this is the idea I'm having. And I want to 
convert into a reality. That's when you reach to the re incubator. They are there in India, I shared. I can share it with you. And here across the US also, and I can, right? That how to connect with them, but you have to have a rock solid idea. Please do research about it because all these incubators, they are very worth to their, they have very talented team and also, but, but money is not a uh, problem or your uh, blocker for you in today's market. If you have the idea, there are people, there are players, they are ready to invest. And at the company I mentioned, right? DC, I have seen them growing from ground up. They have been developed like that. So yeah, money is, should not be a blocker. As long as you have a great idea, you should be able to get incubator. And then once it's a POC is ready, then you can talk to the investors and on take your dreams to the next level. Correct, please. Arman, right? Yes, thank you very much, sir. Next question is, sure. uh, what are the key skills required to be a good entrepreneur? Okay. But there question. may be certain repetitions. Uh, the questions are coming from students. There no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Don't worry. In fact, uh, yeah, so no worries. Uh, yeah, I can, I can understand. I have gone through the same. So the biggest thing which I say, right, in other than identifying the problem or you want to know what you are trying to do. So everywhere there are other players. One thing, keep it in mind. Why will someone talk to you? It said time and again, this question is asked anytime we go. And I'm, we were not that big, right? I mean, you know, we go and do a presentation. The first question, right? You are sometimes people are blunt. They ask, why should I entertain you? You're a small player, right? So in that, uh, right, you have to show what you bring to the table. Like, you know, the, what uniqueness you are bringing it. As I mentioned, right, when I was, someone manager was telling me that, hey, why should I take resources from you or why should I give you the project? Then I told them that you cannot reach to these big companies. No one, I mean, they, you will have to go through the escalation process and then get things done. And, you know, if you give it to me, I'm one call away. If I will try to solve it. If I'm not, I'll be on site and I'll be calling the required resources and get it fixed for you. Right? So, yeah, these are the things. Thank you. You have answered it very well. Uh, 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 Anvay, there are two questions. Uh, I'll, I'll collect them together. They're similar questions. One of the participants uh, uh, asks, Sir, is it must a must to do job before starting a business? And similar question was asked by uh, uh, our TPO, Mr. Saad Hamid. Do you suggest an IT graduate to work in the industry for a couple of years, gain some market insight, and then initiate is her, her own startup? Yeah, very good question. Yes, I would suggest that, that if you have the idea, right? If I'm a fresh graduate, I might be having an idea, but I need to pay my bills, right? Once I move out of hostel life, and I have to pay my bills, I'll be staying in Delhi or any other cities and all. So yes, pursue, take a job, but continue pursuing your dream. Take a job and that would require, it's not going to be a side job. If you can get a side job, well and good, right? But uh, get a job, but continue pursuing and put your 100% energy into that. And uh, I would suggest then don't waste. I mean, initially you will be doing it, but you should be knowing after a couple of years or a uh, one year or so where you are heading to, whether your product is ready. And in the beginning, I was saying that the skills or characteristics of an entrepreneur that keep looking for the feedback with others. Like when you are in university, and I always call it right, that when we are in a university, it's like, well, we are surrounded by same of us, right? When you go to a big industry, it's like an ocean, right? Sitting here in a, uh, Silicon Valley or other areas, I'm saying someone is sitting in Australia and all, you are meeting the experts. And any idea you bring in, that could be already same ideas, right? In the market. So yes, you should, Start the business, and uh, the TPO was, Sa was asking another uh, brother, uh, have, pursue, get a job, and then, but continue pursuing it. Uh, when you feel that it is going to take off, then just quit. Don't wait, please, because there is a risk, but you can take it in the beginning of your career. If you delay it further, you are married, you have kid and all, then, you know, it will be difficult to balance it out. 
Yeah, and and also uh, based on like uh, our experience when we developed this thin SSO and we were getting the patent, it took four years for us to get the patent because every time we submit a reply, they will say, oh, okay, so and so company is already having this solution. Your solution is obsolete. We again come up, we write a paper and assign it to them. It took four years for us to get the patent approved. So yeah, do it in the beginning and then when you feel it's the right moment and uh, you know your product is ready, thing is ready or you whatever you have developed, the idea is ready, then quit and then just fully focus on it. Okay. Thank you. My next uh, sure. questions, it is, it, is, it is basically two questions clubbed into one. Uh, first sure. part is, what should be the first step after having an idea about a product or service? And the next question is, what the uh, funding group wants from a startup? Okay, so they want like when you have the idea, what should we do first? That's what it is. Right. What should, huh, once, once, once you know, uh, uh, what should be the first step after having an idea about the product or service, and then uh, okay. expectation of the funding group mm -hmm. from the startup. So first thing is right. If when you have the idea, right, try to do a POV. It's a must. That you might be thinking something, right? whether it's it's doable can that idea be converted into a reality there could be some challenges right so first and and do a well thought process i i always suggest to uh, my friends and we were talking to other entrepreneurs right we talk about that hey we have to have uh, do a well research these days google when we were we came to us and you know in our days there was no google right we were relying on encyclopedias and all so do a good research and please make sure there is no other player already or similar idea is not there once you know that you have it try to have a some working solution at least it, it cannot be a pure solution but at least it should give a feel to person whom you are trying to like incubator or the Initially, you will be talking to the incubator who will help you to establish and all. So you need to show them something that, yes, this is my idea and this is how it will work. It doesn't have to be a fancy GUI or something you could be writing a simple, I would say, if it is based on the database, develop something in MS Access. You don't need to have a, a good database and good GUI and all. And I have seen that it works. You just give them the idea that I'm doing it, I'm analyzing it. And this is the final product is going to be. They will do it. Yeah. Arman, me. Uh, are you on mute, Arman? Me. Oh, sorry, very sorry. Uh, no, that's, fine, uh, that's, fine, that's, fine, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, the same questioner asked uh, another question that uh, uh, in uh, which position is most needed uh, in a, in a startup. A CEO or a lawyer or any other position? Lawyer? This is what is a lawyer or any other position. I mean, which, which position is most needed in a startup? Uh, developers. I would say developers. And when you are in a startup, you wear multiple hats. I mean, that's, so, so we all know, right? If you have the idea of a startups and work, any companies, any company which is going IPO, who makes the most money out of it? These are the initial first 10 or 20 people who join the company and they wear multiple heads. I have seen even CEO doing a sysadmin work of a company. He founded it and later on it converted, it became a huge. In fact, there is a, a, a Facebook, when I was working, they used to see that even Mark Zuckerberg wrote this code. So, you know, he used to be a coach. So when you are in a startup and you are applying for it, so a couple of things you have to keep in mind. The rewards are huge. They might be paying you a less salary. They, and it is a well-known fact about it that when you start up, when you join a startup, they give you more equity or shares than the uh, package, right? So well-established company might be giving you good salary, but they will not give you stocks, right? So when you are going to join it, then they will expect you First thing as and why I was saying when you are young, you're not married or you don't have the kids and all, you can put more hours that be prepared when you're starting, especially in US, I don't know what the culture is in India. I haven't 
I left it 22 years ago. I mean, I'm sure it is the same, but here you are expected to work more than eight hours for sure. And you will not be doing just the work of a developer or an architect. You will be doing multiple things. You might be asked to do a DBA work. You could be a sysadmin. You could be a developer. You could be anything. But believe me, reward is going to be huge if it succeeds. And, and even if it is not, but you will be learning a lot. And these are the prime years of your career in the beginning of your IT career or your product development or wherever you go in software career. Those are the one which sets the foundation for you what you are today or you will be tomorrow. And as we always say, your today decides tomorrow. Yeah. Please. Uh, thanks for uh, answering that question, Ahmadullah. Uh, next sure. question is coming. Uh, even after having so many competitions around the market, mm -hmm. should we take the risk to challenge one? And how can it be a healthy one and not turn against us? So it depends like which area you are trying to be. If you are going, I'll give an example like social media. You go, if you are trying to go against them, they will kill you. I'm sorry, don't take the literal meaning of the kill, but they will crush you. And if you look at it, the US government has to come and intervene. Like, you know, all these big players were trying to achieve the smaller one. And these big fishes, they achieve the smaller one, right? So it, it depends which area you're trying to be. If you are trying to enter into a social media, all these giants will not let you survive. And also it like, you know, but, but, you know, I still see a lot of opportunities in IT. I'll give you like reporting solutions, friends of mine who are sitting in Middle East and all, and here also always in 22 years, I have seen that reporting is always a solution is in, in need. Any company you go, none of the products is solving their problems. They always run into it. That's one area where you can develop something and come up with a, an idea and do it. Yeah. Next uh, question is, uh, uh, it's, it's from a, a bachelor student uh, sure. asking, I don't have enough knowledge right now. So mm -hmm. what skills are most important to learn at first? And similar question uh, is, is he... how a teacher ahead, may instill entrepreneur skills in students? Related questions. Actually, this is a good question and we have the head of the department, Asimba and all. There should be a workshop on it. And if you can conduct, you know, it's the right time to train. And and one thing I want to share, I don't know how many people are there, but there were 100 plus and all. And I'm assuming that most of us are from MU, but anywhere, right? We need to basically identify Actually, uh, there there was a I I missed the question. There was an inter. Uh, can you just repeat it, please? There was a the, the question. The question is about how how a teacher may instill entrepreneurial okay. skills into okay. students. Sure, sure. I mean, I mean, uh, how much subject knowledge will be helpful in developing those skills? Sure, 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 sure. So, what computer science department or AMU, right, for the engineering college also department also they can initiate something, some paper, or you know you can call the outsiders and they can show them the ways like today we have a small i try to put for you guys uh, and you know for all of us and then show how the entrepreneurship can be started right so those kind of things in the tp uh, i mean our computer science department or uh, engineering college university or combined aim you can have workshop we can call outsiders there are good presenters and they just do their for their livings they can come and tell it and this is the right age actually when you are as a graduate and you have a mindset something when we come out, we hardly think about entrepreneurship. I mean, and this is like by chance or you think, start thinking that, yes, I can do it or we can solve the problems. But yes, university can have some courses or trainings or, you know, call the persons like have the webinars or the workshop. I would suggest that have the workshop and identify the talent and put them in the right areas. Guide Very them. True. Very true. Guide them. This kind of interaction support from especially people like yeah. you and other 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 mm -hmm. students passwords of the department they can be a great help to the and, students yeah and i'll give you an example right we can have an open conversation today inter students are not directly interacting right we are shy i mean we have gone through all this process right we are shy 
So you call them, put them in direct conversation that, and you know, either one of us, uh, there are so many on this call and we have so many achievers from our AMU fraternity or from outside also. I mean, IIT answer or you just, we can reach out to them, call them and then put our ideas. Frankly, uh, the one thing which I have noticed that uh, we are shy. We know the stuff, but we don't talk. But believe you me, being in US for 22 years, coming from AMU, we are very well respected. We are one of the best, and I'm not exaggerating it. My friends who are here uh, on this call, they can echo it. We are one of the best. And I have worked with IITians. I have worked with many universities. We are not less than them. We are the best. It's just that we don't know when we are in US, our values, but when you come here, we are equally competitive or competent. Exactly. Very true. Uh, next, next question. Uh, very few questions are left. Next question is what are uh, we are often intimidated by the rules and regulations imposed by a state? How to uh, deal with that? The rules and regulations imposed by a state? Uh, are we talking about the states in India or? Uh, uh, it has not been made clear. But uh, definitely, uh, uh, let us suppose that it is it is it is India. India, yeah. So I don't want to get into anything, but yes, uh, if you are trying to write something, yes, you have to deal with the local uh, laws. So this is another area when you are starting something, you should be seeing it. Uh, like what? Like for example, I'll give an example, right? If you are trying to develop something in the pharma industry or medical, right? You are trying to solve a problem. Please do read the rules and regulations because at the end of the day, all these hospitals will be buying your products, right? So you need to know, like maybe, and within India, the state's rules are different, right? Central rules come, you can develop it and so, but the states may not be. Like uh, there was going on that all these states were uh, trying to buy these uh, pandemic vaccines and all, and every state was having their own rules, right? They were reaching out, some were reaching out directly to the Pfizer and all, some were not and all. So the rules and regulations, this is part of your research. Because once your thought, your imaginations are into converted into a reality and they are ready, you don't want to be stuck into that, oh, how can I do it? I'm stuck. And you know, so the state is not allowing me. That should have been part of your study and, uh, you know, feasible study, we call it. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So there will be challenges, but, uh, you know, in the beginning, you don't have funds. So you cannot talk to here in the States uh, being gone through the acquiring the patent. It's very expensive. I remember that couple of uh, our subscription or when we sold the product of thin SSO, it all used to go to the, the our attorney, patent attorney. He used to take everything. Same will be in India also, right? When you're developing something and you go and engage a, a well-known uh, attorney and all to want to fight, uh, you know, or to negotiate with the states. So you, to, you should do uh, research or uh, study, a feasible study before you start working on such topics. Uh, Arman, Arman, sir. Arman, sir. Yes, sir. It's uh, midnight uh, over there in US, and uh, Ahmed is getting a nod from the family members. Hey, why are you disturbing our no, sleep? No, 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 don't worry. <laughs> Can you please take by. care of that also. <laughs> uh, we have, we no, have, no, sir, no, only few, by. Don't worry. Two more is for questions, you. and I'll be, I'll no, be finishing it very you. quickly. Ahmed, by another important question is coming in from uh, Mr. Saad Hamid. He is training placement officer. That's why I'm putting his question. Is asking sure. that ah. is a semester. What do you think? I mean, is a semester or a dedicated paper on entrepreneurship followed by live projects is the need of the art? Your comment, Ahmed Bhai. Uh, being gone through it, or having gone through it and all, I think we lag, lag it. We, as I said just uh, like two minutes ago, we are not less than anyone else. But one thing, in our students, so it, I will go one step further. And entrepreneurship is one thing. There should be another thing in uh, Department of Computer Science and our TPO or our AMU should think about how to instill confidence in our students. Because that to start entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurship, two things which I talk uh, I always say when you want to be 
passion and patience and confidence you have to have the confidence and confidence is the one which takes you far patience you will people will hang up on you and all you have to have a thick skin to succeed right and university can do a lot i mean they are doing it i'm not undermining that but they should think about it that how our students are ready because when the iitians and all and and we all work together like you know this all universities degrees and all there but when you come to any big companies and i'm i'm sure the people who are working in uh, bangalore or anywhere else they are working your, your colleagues are iitians also and we are we are the same right we are working with them but they are very well trained and it takes for us time i mean initially when i'm uh, we were in university we are so shy right so let's give them there could be a training or something called the outsider trainers and all instill confidence in them tell them that yes you can do it believe in yourself and give them the ideas that rather than achieving or going for the route of just that i want to be an it guy and i will be i always call his work 9 to 5 and then pay off a house and after working 30 years you want to go that way or you want to do more than that so it's all up to us but we should make our guys our students ready for it we, we will succeed inshallah 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 so uh, with this uh, we have covered almost all the questions uh, uh, i must thank you mr ahmedullah my very dear friend for a very wonderful wonderful uh, presentation and uh, you have handled the question answer session very well you have answered uh the questions of the uh, uh, attendees very well and you have satisfied them uh and uh, i'm i'm very much thankful for you to to you for your uh, uh you know you, you have a spare time for us and inshallah will be will be continuing this kind of interaction in future as well and i also thank everyone for attending today's webinar uh formally uh on behalf of the department of computer science and on behalf of our speaker mr madullah uh, his sure. is his, his from one of us i sincerely thank all the dignitaries and uh, all the participants for being with us this uh, uh and i also extend a special thanks to all our alumni who joined us from the world over Uh, yeah. i know that many of them have could not could not register but 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 they are with us i can see a special thanks That's to sure. the director of computer center and his team for providing technical support thanks to uh, the director of uh, 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 center for distance and online education uh, education for being with uh, for for being with us to the dean faculty of science for remaining with us throughout and to mr uh, uh sad hamid tpo for his uh, uh, regular presence and his interaction i extend my heartfelt gratitude to all the teachers of the department and everyone of the department of computer science uh, family for their whole hearted support rendered in the success of this particular webinar once again i thanks everyone from the core of from the bottom of my heart have a nice day and amudullah bhai uh, uh, with this arman bhai uh, yes yeah. sir i want to take i want to take 2 minutes and you know our tpo and our uh, department Please. head asim bhai is there and all Please. i'll be more than happy to have an informal conversation with our students they can directly ask the question i know hindi would do very well and you know we can do it and i if you want not like a webinar and all if you feel like i am ready to give back whatever i know and i want our guys to succeed because uh -huh. i have gone through tough past and most of us have gone through right the success doesn't come overnight so we have gone through it have seen a lot and i'll be more than happy asim bhai and uh, thank, uh, you. Faisal, thank you and thank you for your offer please and... feel free yeah feel free i'll be happy you uh, do a zoom session with the students i'll come and they can ask any question and i'll guide whatever way i can thank you very much for your kind offer and uh, we'll sure. assure you that uh, in future we will make such kind of arrangement where we can have some informal sort of uh, interaction with our uh, illustrious alumni like you
Uh, sure, so sure, very sure. much, thank you very much. And uh, I, on the behalf of Department of Computer Science, again, uh, thank you, Ahmed, and all the participants. Sure. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I'm humbled and asked, and thank you for inviting me. And I hope it was useful. And yeah, anytime you much. call me, very much. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with this, we come to an end and uh, this session ends formally. Thank you.